And next, we're going to invite Philip to the stage to talk about um, uh, how to access deep in building blocks f from the researcher's point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so this seems to work. So, hello everyone, my name is Philip. I'm a PhD student at the Technical University of Munich. Also, uh, as Judith already mentioned, I'm from the Chair of Network Architectures and Services. And a full disclaimer at the beginning, I am not a deep in researcher. So, when I was putting the slides together, I was actually thinking, okay, looking into the deep end, how can I structure my talk? But actually, when looking more and more into the details of deep end, I've realized that our research actually provides quite a lot of overlap that we are looking into just a little bit from a different perspective instead of looking into the ways and actually how to use and build on top of deep ends, we are actually rather looking into the building blocks that are fundamental for building a robust and uh, decentralized physical infrastructure. So therefore I have structured the talk in the direction of actually how do we assess the deep end building blocks that are relevant for building such infrastructure that will be available uh, to broad set of audience out there and where actually we can possibly find some synergies when it comes to research and also industrial perspective. Also diving a bit into the aspects of what is uh, the research group that I'm part of, which is the Chair of Network Architectures and Services working on. So for a long, long time, we have been actually rather focusing on the rather centralized infrastructure aspects, which I think is actually a good fundamental knowledge that we have gathered uh, in, the, in the time of looking into aspects like protocol design, active passive network experiments, network security, peer-to-peer -peer communications, uh, CDNs, as we already have heard today from, from Robert, mobile communication, and others that actually are, at the end, some of the fundamental blocks that are being used also in the applications of Deepin. And for that, in today's focus, I will be looking into the, some aspects of uh, distributed ledger technologies, specifically focusing on blockchain, design of privacy-preserving pre uh, networks, and also the relation of our activities to the Deepin itself. So in case you're interested, there is the QR code that is pointing to our chair website. So starting a bit of a motivation, uh, it's quite a complex figure to start with, but basically you can think of it when you are looking into the deep end, right? Uh, already as we have seen, we have different layers. And actually if you look into the layers, like typical L L L0, right, as we have seen, L1, L2, and so on, actually inside of that, you have own set of protocols that are actually helping to build such type of layers that are relevant on each of the individual layers. So starting with the uh, infrastructure layer, we are building nowadays on top of uh, robust and reliable infrastructure that is offering by default already by itself certain guarantees when it comes to performance, but also security in the presence, for example, of trusted execution environments. Later on, of course, all of the peers, because we are talking about distributed networks, have to communicate to each other, either in a privacy-preserving fashion or just relying on typical classical TCP IP uh, stack communication protocols like TCP, UDP, QUIC. Then we have some form of, we call it middleware layer, that aims to actually offer some uh, permanent storage, for example, in the same form of uh, Filecorn or, or IPFS, depending on what is your use case. Uh, you want to also maybe have some classical peer-to-peer -peer systems like distributed hash tables, and others. And in addition, you also actually want to make sure, depending on your use case, that you have some form of a blockchain guarantees like that are basically coming from the Byzantine fault tolerance that can be actually used to ensure some security. And on top of that, you can build your applications using smart contracts, state channels, and other types of solution out there. And in parallel to all of that, because it's hard to uh, see where only the cryptographic primitives can be used, you can actually rely on these individual aspects uh, on each of the individual layers because, of course, you want to have crypt cryptographic mechanism across different uh, layers because, of course, you want to provide security also on different layers than just on a, on a single layer itself. So this is just some aspect of motivation on how do we actually approach to it and all of these individual primitives, I believe if you look under the hood of what is happening in Filecoin and other blockchains, are actually being used as a part of the building blocks that are relevant to building such a decentralized system itself. We, from our perspective, are seeing some aspects when it comes to research challenges uh, for the decentralized infrastructure nature, as we have also heard from the previous talk of Lucas, with respects, for example, to the hardware specification, load sharing, network throughput of the overall system, 
Security guarantees, very important topic, especially if you are asking big customers when it comes to the trust of the individual peers that are running in the system. Usability, like how performant is the system and actually want to interact with the system. And in general, providing some fixed quality of service to the users inside of the system. So for that, we are looking into finding a way on how to be able to assess the, these guarantees that the system should provide in a reliable fashion and later on deploy models that basically we may be devised locally and maybe also devised based on the theoretical global needs and be later on able to actually assess and monitor uh, such type of guarantees that the system itself should be providing to its users itself. So I think this is something that could be relevant also for the, for the deepened infrastructure when it comes to the mass adoption of people that actually want to use and build the system for future, future uh, years. For that, in order to be able to assess these uh, individual challenges, we have devised a methodology that is aiming to assess um, the capabilities of various blockchains, but not only that, but also the individual protocols and the building blocks that are being used inside of these systems in a reproducible fashion. We also want to be, compare, be able to compare different architectures. So for example, if you are a core developer that is building a Filecoin protocol ground up or other pro blockchain in the future, you of course have a plethora of different type of solutions you can actually put into your system and you have to have a way on actually how to compare and assess what are the particular uh, building blocks you are actually choosing to build up your system for that and in order to be able to achieve it you also actually have to identify the common ground in order to have a comparable uh, evaluation among the individual peers because otherwise you'll be comparing pairs and pairs right and you will not really be able to provide uh, qualitative insights into the selection you have made. So for that, we are focusing on deployments of various systems, for example, different layer one solutions uh, into our controlled environment and be emul emulating the realistic deployments in the wild. Here are some scenarios. We don't have to dive into all of them, but of course, some of the aspects we can consider is like the life cycle of uh, individual transactions when it comes to the uh, throughput of the system. We want to also understand what is the overhead when it comes to computation, for example, of some certain uh, zero knowledge proofs or other parts. Uh, is important for the individual peers in the system. We are also looking into the peer-to-peer -peer network structure and the technology that is being used for that. We are also looking into advanced cryptographic protocols, uh, part, of, part, of, part of my research, like focusing on threshold cryptography, zero-knowledge proofs, and of course diving into the aspect of infrastructure layer and understanding how and what type of guarantees the infrastructure itself can also provide to us when it comes to maybe some form of trusted execution environments or other type of guarantees that actually offer additional security uh, to the application stack being built on top of such type of infrastructure. Uh, for that, the main challenge we are kind of facing because we have seen the huge numbers, right, when it comes to, for example, Filecoin, when it comes to the, amount, to the amount of storage, how many peers are out there. We are talking usually about system with uh, hundreds of nodes that are globally distributed and they have by themselves many configuration parameters. So if you look actually under the hood on what type of configuration parameters certain blockchain has, like for example, uh, what is the gossip factor? Like when I'm sending a message, how many peers actually am I communicating directly? All of these type of information are actually affecting the performance of the system and also introduce additional overhead uh, to the individual peers. So we want to basically bring this globally distributed system into our local uh, system in our own infrastructure. So here I'm just providing some overview numbers. You can think of it like we have several uh, tens of basically physical hardware nodes that in total account for roughly eight terabytes of, of RAM, so not, not as much comparable, for example, to the Filecoin capacity, uh, have around 850 CPU threads, where basically we try to emulate the full-fledged deployments of certain solutions out there, like blockchains or other parts, in a local de de environment and basically collect the insights that can be used as a fundamental understanding of the building block that can be later used in a full-fledged uh, environment out there. When it comes to deployment strategies, I was mainly focusing about the local deployment, but in the future we also want to support uh, cloud deployment. So this is something that uh, is a little bit, of course, against the idea of, of DeepIn because we might be relying on a, on a centralized cloud provider. But of course, in the future, it will be easily doable to also port it to some other solution. And we are looking into the theoretical aspects of the individual solutions. For example, you are talking about the, the new consensus that will be introduced on IPFS to basically see how performant the consensus is when it comes to throughput 
and, and so on. So it basically could provide additional insights into such a system on the theoretical level and also later on when it comes to the proof of concept implementation. For that, we are interested in micro and macro benchmarks when it comes to the evaluations of, of the scale, basically, of the individual building blocks and consider various types of testing and play around with, with various metrics and parameters when it comes to the assessment of the corresponding system under the test. For the experiments themselves, we are basically having a centralized orchestrator that is later on being used to provide basically the information about how do we deploy such an experiment. Uh, we later on basically have the system under the test that in this case, uh, for example, could be Filecoin, could be other L1, where we want to collect the insights about how the building blocks behave. And we collect basically the insights at the end that are relevant to, to individual peers. So when it comes to the initial challenges we have seen on previous slides and also uh, in today's talk, what are the set subset of supported features? We can play around with the hardware specification. So we can modify, for example, how many virtual CPU cores do we allocate to individual uh, machines in the system so that way we understand how does the system scale with additional computational resources. We can also emulate load balancing among the individual peers when it comes to the, to the load sharing, which is, I think, uh, very interesting, especially for the increase of the throughput of the system. We can also modify the workloads. This is, I think, something that will be quite interesting uh, uh, based on the previous work when we were talking about the workloads that are relevant in the system, how do we actually assess how the system behaves uh, when a certain load hits the system. We also are interested in the theoretical guarantees. So this basically is usually done on a theoretical level, level right, when it comes to applying certain security mechanism on a theoretical level, understanding it, and later on deploying it inside of the system, and understanding also the usability. So of course, depending on how responsive your system has to be, you will have different criteria. So for example, if you talk about voice over IP, we know that users when they start to have a certain amount of latency in order of tens of milliseconds, they start to be frustrated with using of the service. So it's important to also define the criteria, for example, for the read and write speeds and other aspects for your corresponding system and be able to assess what type of uh, application the system actually can fit based on the, the service guarantees it can provide. And over, I think what will be quite interesting, we see it uh, for the centralized infrastructure. They aim to provide some form of service level agreement or quality of service. How can we actually devise and possibly later on extend it to such a complex system like Deepin when it comes to evaluation of continuous health of the system and be able to collect insight in this direction? Of course, uh, what is something important, but it's also kind of a question I think to the audience is how does the security and decentralization play into all of this, right? Because it's maybe uh, Security can just be a buzzword that you put into your contract, but it's something that you actually have to consider on how does it affect the individual uh, parameters and maybe we have to look into the ways on actually how are we able to quantify what does it actually mean for the particular applications. So going to some main takeaways of my talk, so we definitely see a several open challenges that I think are uh, something that we have experience with from building on top of our recent or previous works when it comes to global distributed systems. We have to, I think, consider some aspects of what are the system guarantees, uh, properties we want to actually achieve, how do we evaluate it, and what are the possible quality of service we want to achieve to different users in the system. And I think for that it will be interesting to look into a way actually how can we unify the evaluation guidelines when it comes to such a large-scale distributed and decentralized system. So we hope to achieve it by providing a stepping stone to call it holistic view on the overall stack that is basically uh, relevant for the interaction of the individual layers in such a system. And this should hopefully improve the lives of the users in, of the system, but hopefully make it clearer for the core developers of various solutions <coughs> out there to make qualified decisions when moving forward, uh, not only for their particular system, but considering also other type of interactions for the, for the future of the system itself. So on that note, I would like to be happy to discuss some possible synergies you see, and in general, uh, open to, to any questions. And yes, thank you. <laughs> and last few words, uh, the basically the framework that we are I have been briefly describing is also available on uh, GitHub if you're interested in. And a small uh, announcement, we are also organizing Tomb Blockchain Saloon on the 16th and 17th of May. So I believe some of you will be there, either as a panelist or as the audience. So happy to also see you there. We still have some spots, so feel free to check the agenda and happy to see you there. Thank you very much.